Good evening. We're going to go ahead and call the public session of the board meeting for October 17th. Time is 6 p.m. And I would like, um, I need to make an announcement that Trustee Garcia is not in attendance this evening. And I've appointed Trustee Navarro to act as a clerk pro tem for tonight's meeting. Mrs. Worley, would you conduct a roll call, please? President of the board, Melissa Regal. Present. Clerk pro tem, Joseph Navarro. Present. Trustee Karen Bradford. Present. Trustee Eric Dittweiler. Present. Record will show Trustee Garcia is absent this evening. Dr. Trenton Hansen. Present. Paula Ford. Present. Dave Dubrowski. Present. Rosa Santos Lee. Present. Daniel Brooks. Present. Student board members, Priscilla Perez. Present. Haley Bisbee. Present. Kayla Hurst. Present. Record will show Alan Rodriguez is not here this evening. Okay, thank you. This evening, I'm going to have our flag salute started by Deputy Hernandez. And if you could remain standing for a moment of silence. I would like to hold a moment of silence for Mrs. Shirley McDaniel Minnick, retired district employee who passed away. Mrs. Minnick was employed with the district as a teacher from 1975 to 1993. The board would like to express our condolences to the McDaniel Minnick family. Excuse me. I would like to hold a moment of silence for Mr. Daniel Richards, district employee who passed away. Mr. Richards was employed with the district as a teacher from 2010 to 2016, a teacher on special assignment in technology from 2016 to 2021, and most recently our coordinator of education technology. The board would like to express our condolences to the Richards family. You may be seated. Tonight's inspirational comment will be conducted by Trustee Bradford. Thank you, President Regal. For tonight's inspirational comment, I chose to share the Future Farmers of America Creed because FFA is one of our extracurricular activities in the district. And I want you to know more about the values that our students are learning, as well as skills that are contained in this lovely metaphor for life. So if you're not into growing food or livestock, please substitute whichever endeavor you wish. This is what our students say at meetings. I believe in the future of agriculture with a faith born not of words, but of deeds. Achievements won by the present and past generations of agriculturalists and the promise of better days through better ways, even as better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bradford. And reports from closed session, Mr. Brooks. Thank you, President Regal. In closed session by a unanimous vote of four to zero with all trustees who were present, uh, voting in favor and none opposed, the board voted to appoint Dr. Karina Becerra Murillo as the new director of human resources and she'll work with our classified employment side and Dr. Becerra Murillo happens to be right here. Would you please stand? You. And also in closed session by a vote of four to zero with all trustees present voting in favor and none opposed, the board voted to approve the resignation agreement with employee number 284943. 
Thank you, President Regal. No, there are no other reports. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Recognize Mr. Bo Yarbrough, Press Enterprise. I'm sorry. Student board members, Dr. Hansen. Thank you, President Regal. And it's my pleasure this night, uh, tonight to have our student board members uh, provide their reports to us from their various schools. And so we will start out tonight with, with Kayla and we'll just work our way down the road. So Kayla, would you like to share a little bit about Rubido High School? Good evening, President Regal, Dr. Hansen, trustees, board members, and cabinet. As this is our second board meeting this month, I am happy to update everyone on this month's successes at Rubido. Starting off strong, girls volleyball has secured a spot on CIF playoffs, and the first game is against St. John de Lestinac in Temecula tomorrow. We also expect football to make it to CIF as they beat A.B. Miller and Pacific and continue to move forward 2-1 to one in league. Girls tennis has two more games and the results will determine their CIF standings. We had our PSAT testing this past Wednesday, and we also have our ASVAB testing planned for this month. Our community schools program partnered with our wellness center and were able to feed 200 families. The Rescue Generation program is actively mentoring students at risk of failing or in need of support. On Thursday, October 13th, we had our college and career kickoff day. Counselors from Patriot and Harupa Valley came to Rubido to assist seniors with financial aid and college applications during their English classes. Students were also given a special lunch. Students who finished their financial, financial aid before October 12th were invited to a special financial aid fiesta put on by our College and Career Center counselors. Students were provided food, two piñatas full of candy, and a chance to win a JBL speaker, a Squishmallow, and free yearbooks and dance tickets. Friday was our homecoming rally, a Falcons night in Vegas, and we got a tremendous amount of positive feedback from both students and staff members. We had performances from sports, Rubido dance team, Color Guard, ASB, and Ballet Folklorico. Overall, the rally was a great way to get students involved and excited for the homecoming football game and dance. Homecoming, the homecoming dance was the following Saturday, and many students went and had a great time. Unfortunately, the power went out around 9 p.m. because of the rain, and most students went home after this. But other than that, homecoming went very well, and students had a fun time. Next Thursday, October 27th, we have our Pink Out and Senior Night football game planned against Haruba Valley. The nest will be decked out in pink to raise awareness for the fight against breast cancer, and we will also be having a DJ to play music during timeouts and halftime. With the fall season ending and winter coming, Rubido is excited to share all of our fun plans for winter with you. This concludes my second school board report for the month of October. Thank you. Thank you, Kayla. Uh, Haley, would you like to share, please? Good evening, Superintendent Hansen, Cabinet, Board Members, and Trustees. On October 4th, Patriot met with Harupa Valley, Rubido, Nueva Vista, and Superintendent Hansen at our first Superintendent Student Advisory Council meeting to discuss our school environments and methods of improvement at our individual sites. Patriot is happy to announce we will be hosting the next meeting. Continuing a month of celebration, awareness, and honor, Patriot is hosting Red Ribbon Week to spread awareness regarding drug abuse this week. ASB handcrafted 2,500 red ribbons this past week, which were passed out to every student during advisory today, providing everyone with a means of supporting the campaign. To conclude the week, students will place their painted handprint on a banner in the quad pledging to be drug-free. On October 20th, National Honor Society will induct their members for the 2022-2023 school year with a candle lighting ceremony. As FAFSA opened on October 1st, Patriot will host College Kickoff Day on October 27th, encouraging students to submit their financial aid applications by the end of the month with the incentive of two additional graduation tickets granted to those who submit by the deadline. Counselors will conduct workshops with their individual seniors on the 27th to guide them in completing the application. In support of breast cancer awareness, ASB will host a pink out on October 28th. That evening, our varsity football team will play their final game of the season against Ramona at Rubido High School at 7 p.m. Join us to support our seniors as they are honored for their final game. As for sports, Patriot celebrated our senior athletes at Volleyball Senior Night this past Wednesday, in which they secured a victory for their final game of the season. On Wednesday, our girls golf team also won their two-match battle against Rupa Valley. That concludes my second report for the month of October. Thank you. Thank you, Haley and Priscilla, Rupa Valley High School. Good evening, President Regal, trustees, Dr. Hansen, and Kevnett. My name is Priscilla Perez, and I will be representing Harupa Valley High School. Harupa Valley FFA had a successful week at the SoCal Fair located at the Lake Paris Fairgrounds, 
Personally, as a student who participated in the show and auction with my pig Lila, it was an unfor- unforgiv- unforgettable experience. As a senior su- as a senior participating in this fair, which was my first fair ever with FFA, I wish I could have done it sooner. I love the environment and team effort everyone put in. I also really enjoy seeing Ghirardelli, Rubido's FFA newborn goat. FFA has put in many hours and spent many much quality time with our animals that I admit, which I didn't think I would, I did get emotionally attached. ASB has hosted our annual fall blood drive and concluded with nearly 50 blood donations. We have been in preparation for a pink out game, which was last Friday and um, oh, we supported the fight against breast, can- breast cancer. ASB has also started preparing for our winter formal and Halloween spirit week, which we are continuing to involve kindness as far out into the school year as possible. For example, our Thursday spirit day being November 3rd is thankful Thursday. We dress up in fall colors and have a lunch activity with supplies provided by ASB to write kind letters to loved ones and reasons why we are thankful for them. Senior class council will begin selling Halloween grams this Wednesday at lunch. Supporting Red Ribbon Week next week, all homeroom classes are open to picking up decorations and supplies such as poster paper from the Jag Den or ASB workroom and decorate the inside of their class door. Red Ribbon Week theme this year is Celebrate Life, Live Drug Free. The grading rubric is based off which door is the cleanest, most creative, and most precise um, to getting the message across. Linker wrote kind messages around campus with chalk celebrating kindness month as well as mental health awareness month, as well as handed out notes of kind messages to random students throughout the school and painted rocks with cute pictures and kind words and placed them around campus. We appreciate you link crew leaders as well as all leaders school slash worldwide. Our student advisory council met up during our homeroom time to discuss improvements and our achievements. Lots of ideas as well as action plans were brought to the attention of our student advisory council for the betterment of our students and school. In our fall sports news, our wins have been from football, Indian Springs, boys water polo, Pacific, San Bernardino, Indian Springs, girls volleyball, Indian Springs, Pacific, and Rubido, Girls Golf, Rialto, Norda Vista. Girls Tennis, Indian Springs, A.B. Miller, and Rubido. This concludes my report. Thank you, students. As always, uh, did a great job reporting on your schools and all the things that are happening. So we always appreciate you being here. Thank you. Yes, thank you. We love them. Okay, officially. Sorry about that. I get a jump, jump lines here. Um, recognize Mr. Bo Yarbrough, Press Center Prize. Dr. Hansen. Oh, so I'm sorry, Mr. Brooks. I'm willing to yield to Dr. Hansen if you so choose. But um, actually, for the next three recognitions, could I ask that the board and Dr. Hansen all come here in front of the dais to participate sure. in the recognitions, please? And while that's happening, Mr. Yarborough, would you mind coming up as well? Thank you very much. Add a little pomp and circumstance here to the event. Tonight, we are recognizing Mr. Bo Yarborough, who is a reporter for the Press Enterprise and the Southern California News Group as a recipient of the California School Boards Association's Golden Quill Award. It's a prestigious award. Uh, Mr. Yarborough is among only 15 journalists statewide to receive the award this year. Um, And he was nominated by Harupa Unified for this honor for his March 2022 series on bullying and the many proactive and positive approaches that districts like ours are using to address this issue. Uh, Working with USC Center for Health Journalism, Mr. Yarbrough produced a comprehensive and well-rounded look at this issue. He analyzed data, interviewing educators and other experts, and gathering student input. The series noted districts such as ours with lower rates of bullying as reported on the California Healthy Kids Survey. And we are happy to note that Mr. Yarborough's reporting showed that JUSD has the lowest rate of bullying in Riverside County as reported by students participating in the California Healthy Kids Survey. 
Uh, his series noted uh, creative and proactive approaches that we take to address this issue, including mental health supports and programs such as Link Crew and Youth Court. And he also took the time not only to interview our Director of Educational Equity, Mr. Monty Owens, but also our students who are involved in helping their peers. We are very grateful to you, Mr. Yarborough, for your objective and in-depth look at an issue that affects every school district. So thank you very much, and I'll yield now to the board. President Regal, with your permission, we'll move to the next item. Um, so uh, earlier this month, uh, October 2nd, which happened to be a Sunday, was National Custodian Day. And the following day, we had planned for October 3rd, a recognition for our custodians. And then due to unforeseen circumstances, that had to be rescheduled for tonight. Um, National Custodian how Day, however, is commemorated each year on October 2nd and provides all of us with an opportunity to recognize and show our appreciation for the important work that is performed by this group of Harupa Unified team members. The district is very proud of the 97 custodians who work for, for us in our schools and our facilities, keeping our campuses clean and safe for our students and staff who, who work there. Um, tonight, we actually have some representatives from each of our high school night custodial crews who are present, and I'm going to ask them each to come up if they could. Uh, we have Mr. Adrian Smith from Harupa Valley High School. Bertha Anaya from Patriot High School. And Mr. Robert Kana from Rubido High School. As I said, we appreciate all that they do for us and encourage all of our students and staff to share their thanks with them during this time. And Bertha, I'm not going to let you get away. We're going to take a picture. <laughs> And I, and I don't believe that they're here to present the award tonight. Is that correct? Okay, we'll move on to recognize JUSD for lowest experience modification in JPA. Mrs. Ford. Thank you. So the district is being recognized for its contribution to reducing workers' compensation losses. For the second year in a row, JUSD had the lowest experience modification, otherwise known as the XMOD, 
um, in the Joint Powers Authority, or our JPA. Uh, tonight, we have Mr. Michael Rogers. He is JUSD's Director of Risk Management. He's joined us to recognize JUSD for its contributions to reducing um, workers' compensation losses. I want to congratulate uh, Mr. Rogers, and I also want to thank all of JUSD's administrators, directors, supervisors, and staff members, because they really are prioritizing the safety of em you know, employee safety and the safety of all of our, our employees and our students. And it takes everyone working together to achieve this type of recognition. So congratulations. Congratulations, Michael. Recognize funding for Adult Education and Family Literacy Act. Mr. Dabrowski. Thank you. CDE recently notified us that again, the Adult Education and Family Literacy Act grant has been awarded in the amount of $323,140. I like hearing the dollars. Um, introduce candidate for the November 8th, 2022 governing board election, Dr. Hansen. Yes, as, as customary and as, as we've been doing over the last uh, three board meetings, just wanted to uh, publicly recognize those who are, will be running for re-election, so an election here in our area. So in trustee area one, uh, clerk Robert Garcia, trustee area three, uh, trustee Bradford, and then trustee area five, president Melissa Ragel and Dr. Uh, Janet Long. And I, we typically uh, want to recognize them. I don't see Dr. Long in the audience tonight, but um, those will be those who will be running for election in this November. Thank you. Thank you. And we will move to board comments. We'll go ahead and start with Trustee Ditweiler. Thank you, President Ragel. Last month, I had the pleasure and honor of attending the Riverside County Office of Education Excellence Through Equity Conference. There were a dozen or so trustees from around the county in attendance, along with many administrators and teachers. Europa was well represented, though perhaps not as well as Murrieta Valley, which brought about 100 people, including their whole board. Attendees got to hear many powerful stories told by people who were able to succeed in spite of challenging childhoods. We also got to hear current students talk about how important it is for them to feel respected and part of their school's community. We heard how apparently small actions by caring adults can provide the confidence a student needs to do well. We heard from people selling learning materials that is essential to ensure that every student gets the basic toolkits for literacy and numeracy, as these are the foundations upon which further learning is built. I was pleased to see the market rewarding these passionate entrepreneurs for their work and wonder how much they drive innovation and education. The Riverside County Office of Education and its constituent districts spent a lot of staff hours and money on this event because excellence through equity is not a slogan, but rather a theory that explains how equity leads to excellence. Perhaps it's easier to see why diversity leads to excellence. Different things being tried and different perspectives are all opportunities to find new and wonderful things. Evolution works by chance variation and fitness test. If you have no variation, that is no diversity, you can't evolve. Colleges have spent the last 30 years trying to diversify their student bodies because they know that a diversity of perspectives and lived experiences contributes to all students learning to think critically. Diversity is still an issue in higher education because they have struggled to find adequately prepared candidates who would contribute to their diversity. K through 12 in California, at least, has always had diversity as the state has always had a diverse population. Colleges have struggled with diversity because K-12 has not always had a commitment to equity. That is the notion of giving every student what they need to succeed. However, they constructively define success. California made a commitment to equity in the middle of the last decade when we out adopted the local control funding or LCS, local control funding formula or LCFF, which targets additional funds to districts with large numbers of students who face obstacles to their learning, like not knowing English or having a stable home. Once the K-12 schools learn how to use these supplemental funds to close the gaps in learning outcomes, there will be many well-prepared students from all backgrounds for colleges to admit. 
Diverse colleges will lead to a diverse professional class whose differing perspectives illuminate a multidimensional view of the world and its problems, as well as giving each group a stake in each profession and the economy as a whole. We have talked about diversity, having people from different populations, and equity, giving each what they need. But there is a third concept, and that is inclusion, which means ensuring that all the diverse people that you have feel like they belong. The stories we heard about the life-changing impact of small affirming acts were stories about the power of inclusion and the importance of feeling that you belong and that you matter. I sometimes get questions about how diversity, equity, and inclusion relate to critical race theory. The best way to explain this is to recall that prior to having the goal of achieving equity, that is giving each what they need to thrive, we had the goal of achieving equality, that is treating everyone the same. Critical race theory is simply the observation that even with all the progress we have made over the last hundred years or so, we have still not achieved equality. This, along with the conclusion that not getting one's due can hinder one's progress, is really all there is to CRT. It's really more of a self-evident truth than a theory. I think excellence through equity is both more informative and more helpful. Thank you. Thank you. Trustee Bradford. Thank you, President Regal. First, I want to tell our student board members how much I admire you for your participation with us. You are learning important things by making time to watch community governance in action. It is a fantastic experience for you. And as Dr. Seuss wrote, oh, the places you'll go. I want to say congratulations to our custodians on National Custodians Day. I am always happy to honor you because like the rest of our classified staff members, you are so often trusted by our students to be their friends and their confidants. I'm sure I've mentioned before how our oldest student helped set up Miraloma Middle School, working with a custodian as the gentleman talked to him about adult topics like his future life and financial planning for it and how to save money for investments. Travis doesn't remember his name, but he remembers what the gentleman advised. So for John Wilson and all of the other custodians, whoever that man may be, that's the quality of staff you have. I participated in the California School Board Association Golden Bell Award of validations when I visited the Corona Narco Unified School District's Academy of Innovation to judge its application. I like visiting other school districts because it makes me a better trustee to ask questions about their programs as I compare our programs and contrast with what we do. Finally, I attended a monthly meeting of the Site Representatives Council of our NEA National Education Association, HARUPA, which is our teachers union, to listen to their comments about their schools. I like to hear directly from our teachers whom I consider our frontline soldiers in educating and taking care of our students. So for you parents who are here or are listening, our teachers union, this board of education and our district administrators have an exceptional relationship, which is not always the case in other districts because their leaders work very hard for the benefit of your students to have a happy environment in the classroom. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Bradford. Trustee Navarro. <clears throat> Thank you, President Riggle. The school custodian is the silent hero of the school. They are always the first to arrive each day and clean up messes none of us would dare touch. They seem to befriend everyone who passes them by, and they make our school sparkle while cleaning the path for teachers to teach. One of my greatest memories of feeling, uh, remembering about a custodian was I went to Magnolia Elementary School in Riverside, and I, at recess, left my lunch on the, uh, on the playground, and it got rained on. Everything became soggy and I had no food. My custodian had found that because it had my name on it and actually asked me if I had lunch. And I told him, no, I do not. 
He split my sandwich with me and gave me his bag of chips. He told me he had a second one. I don't think he did. I think he wanted to see me not go hungry. So shout out to the custodians who do the extra mile that we just we just don't see. So that's a moment, a moment that I always recommend. Harupa will once again be partnering with Riverside Unified School District to host a series of virtual college applications in partnership with Senator Roth, Congressman Takano, and Assembly Member Severantes and Mr. Medina's Poly High School. Uh, this is open to all 12th grade students in Harupa, Alvord, and Riverside School District. These workshops will take place each Wednesday night in October and on November 9th at various locations, including Cal Baptist University, who has guaranteed admission to both US JUSD students and RUSD students. I, know I believe we have one more board meeting before the election night, but I'd just like to get into the importance of voting. You know, I think a lot of people think we just, we vote for president, we vote for senators, but there are a lot of local positions that we vote on those days as well. So make sure you just do your due diligence. Uh, I know we have a school board uh, um, um, election, a billboard on there talking about fentanyl, you know, and then the nation's drug related overdose and epidemic continues to worsen with the rise of fentanyl. Um, the epidemic becomes, continues to change and become worse. Uh, the epidemic affects every state and now is driven by illicit fentanyl, fentanyl analogs, which have been combined with methamphetamines and cocaine, often in combination or in adulterated firms, forms. More than 100,007 deaths reported in the United States in this past years. This news hits home uh, for me and my family. Years ago, I lost my nephew to a drug overdose. Uh, it's a piece of our family that we'll never get back, and he will truly be missed. So it's urgent more than ever to please speak to our children about drug use. And it might seem fun. It might seem it's, it's highlighted in movies, but it's a lot more dangerous now, especially with this, this fentanyl that's mixing with, mixing with our kids and, and killing them. And, it, and it, it goes from all across from rich to poor to young and old, it's affecting us all. Please, if we can, just talk to your kids about this. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Navarro. Um, I have some notes from the last meeting since we didn't have any electricity or um, early headlights, thanks to our um, staff that was able to uh, improvise with, um, with the generators and lights in here. However, I wanted to save my notes and as well as the people that were present. So the first one that I wrote down was um, Bo Yarbrough. I, I thank you. I cannot express how much I appreciate that you're writing something positive for our districts. Sometimes we are the underdog or we don't get the, um, the spotlight. And I truly appreciate you taking the time. Um, I get a little nerdy, so I did some research on you. So you lived in Virginia, Egypt. That's pretty cool. And California but you're also very passionate about resilience in school environments, your prize projects. So you're truly invested in finding the best materials to share with the public on, on sources and resolutions and improvements. So thank you, but also the bowling, um, you had multiple articles and I just can't express, I'm just so excited that you wrote about Harupa and um, congratulations for being recognized for CSBA. And um, I'm sure if you meet with our communications team, you need an article idea. She probably got some great stories to share because we are, we truly are um, a gem and we're no longer going to be the hidden gem. So there's a lot of great stories coming out with our staff and our students and their success. So, but I wish you um, continued success and look forward to reading more of your articles. And then as well as um, in September, since we were in that transition, so I'm, I'm talking about things, you know, just almost a month ago, Indian Hills Elementary's ribbon cutting for the new track. So I was able to visit the school and the students. Uh, once we cut the ribbon, they were taking a, a lap around it. Um, it was a really exciting music to go with it. The, the students were super excited to have their own track. And from what I understand is that they're going to organize the uh, the hundred mile uh, meets so the parents can come down uh, once a week and walk with their students. And then um, on September 22nd, um, California, excuse me, California secretary of state, Dr. Shirley Weber visited Patriot high school. That was great um, to encourage our students to pre-register to vote. So at 16, so once they're 18, they're ready to um, not worry about registering. You're already going to receive notice and receive your ballots. And then on September 24th, Group of Valley, uh, the Lions Club and the Rotary hosted a food fest. This is an annual event 
Um, I saw Dr. Hansen, Mrs. Ford down there working. Uh, this is all the money, all the proceeds go into scholarships from to both organizations that are returned to our students that graduate. Bo, write that down. Um, <laughs> Anyway, so September 27th, um, State of the City. So we there was two events this week or that week, one with the business community and then the residents. Great turnout, a lot of insight to what's taking place within our city that also impacts our school. So I really enjoy attending those and receiving that information. But there's so many uh, long-term plans, that 10-year plan. So we're going to see a lot of progress within our city. And then on the 28th, oh, excuse me, I already did that one, um, 10 one. Oh, yes, there is a, a doctor that, uh, Dr. Veronica Contreras, that is quite the advocate. She is a Hispanic or Latino. Uh, she's the first in her family to be a doctor, it has students enrolled in our, our district, but only about 6% of doctors are Hispanic. Well, she is creating an initiative to walk for fitness. Uh, we did it at Vernola Park the first time, but there's they're anticipating coming weekly or monthly, but to encourage health, but talk to a doc. So it's walk with a doc. And then what was great is Sky Country jumped in on that. So we saw Miss uh, Betancourt come down and she's stamping the students little tickets to make sure that they're getting accounted for on those on those uh, miles throughout the year. Um, but it was a great, a great event, but also promotes being healthy. And then October was school safety month. Um, our bus drivers, they're angels too. They're, you know, it's like driving a rock concert and making sure all the students are um, arriving to school and home safely with all that noise. So um, truly they are saints behind the wheel. And then we also have October was National Custodian Day. The work you do, the campuses are pristine and um, the kindness. They, they are part of this community. And I love that they have that relationship with students that's very positive and, and their presence really is important. So I, I can't thank our custodians enough. And then we have, um, okay, October 5th. Well, I attended a National Walk to School Day at Pacific Avenue Academy of Music. That was a really large attendance, a lot of students and parents. Um, it wasn't very, you know, it was a jaunt to the school, but it was great um, to see that happening. But it looks like it was something very popular with, within the district at all the campuses. And I look forward to seeing more walking. And then October 10th, I attended Norco College President Advisory Board. They provided quite a few updates with their working with the districts, the dual enrollment. So students that are in high school can attend Norco College and take an additional course to, to start those courses. But what was great is that if they take a course at Norco College, they're going to get credit to their high school requirements, but as well as college. So it gets some uh, the rolling forward. And they just provided so much, but also that partnership of um, the career technical education and intern. So there's going to see a lot more intern opportunities through those CTE courses. And then on October 2nd, I attended the District Advisory Council. Looks like we have a lot of new parents that have taken, um, joined this committee. And there was so much engagement. And it's really exciting. It's because as the board and administration parent invo involvement is really important. And so that collaboration and when uh, Mr. Mr. Blake was covering the information over the year and talking about the budget and how things were applied, I heard a lot of great feedback and suggestions and it was very positive. It's, I'm looking forward to this year of being involved with DAC again, if the board will let me. Um, <laughs> And then I also, I just have some other notes that I wanted to jot down. So Karina, congratulations on this um, new position for you. I'm sure Director of HR, you're looking forward to jumping in there and working with the team. So once again, congratulations. And student board members, I know it's just a long one, but I'm combining two meetings in one, but love all the information. Looks like, you know, you have the homecoming, 
um, some fundraisers coming up, but also that pink out football game. I might go to that. So look forward to that. And then um, I think that is all. I just want to throw in the fentanyl information. That is such a travesty and um, really, you know, students and parents communicate, especially accepting anything and, and doing something with it. It's so deadly. And it just reminds me of the, the media covering heroin in the 80s. So this seems like it's that repeating itself. But how do we get the message to our students to be very careful and, and you know, avoid these, especially because we're starting to see it closer and closer. And a couple of weeks ago, I had a conversation with Congressman Takano, and that was one of his questions was about the fentanyl and what are the schools doing with it? And we're fortunate, knock on wood, that we have not seen any cases here, but our high schools are prepared um, with the antidote. So we were, you know, preparing ourselves and so that we hope we never have to use it, but we, we're ready. And I believe that is all I'm going to cover today. That was a lot. That was a mouthful. We will go ahead and move on to public verbal comments. And I'm, um, what's it? Oh, okay. We don't have any public verbal comments, so I don't need to read my disclaimer. Okay. No public verbal comments. We will go ahead and move on to administrative reports and written communications. Yeah, let's see, report on Saturday school program 2021-2022, Mrs. Santos Lee. Thank you, President Regal. The Saturday school enrichment program was offered on 10 different dates during the 2021-2022 school year. All schools participated in a total of $763,728.30 in annual daily attendance was recovered. After costs, the total recouped ADA was $505,625.59. Enrichment and activities offered throughout the district drew students from grades 1st through 12th to the program. Program dates for the 2021-2022 school year are listed in your agenda details. The program is also being offered again this year, and those dates are also in your agenda details along with the Saturday school report in the backup materials. Thank you. 2022-2023 inter intra district attendance permits. Mrs. Santos Lee. Thank you, President Regal. The 2022-2023 intra district open enrollment attendance permit summary provides information on incoming and outgoing transfers within the district and the number of students involved at each school. The total number of students involved in open enrollment transfers was 706. A copy of the summary is included in the backup materials. The 2022-2023 interdistrict attendance permit summary provides information on outgoing and incoming transfers to and from other districts. Reasons for the transfers, number of students involved, and identifies the school district participation in this cooperative venture. Total students involved in the interdistrict transfers were 386. 387, pardon me, into the district and 578 out of the district. A copy of the summary is included in the backup materials. Thank you. Williams Settlement Quarterly Uniform Complaint Report Summary, Mr. Dabrowski. We had zero complaints. Thank you. Other administrative reports and written communications. Dr. Hansen. Yes, I'd just like to give a quick uh, oral report on the DSA study that the board, if you recall, on September 12th, at the September 12th board meeting, uh, the board had directed staff to uh, provide a or look into a study of Del Sol Academy and the capacity issues and some of the issues that um, we find at that school in order to do a, a comprehensive study on on maybe uh, reducing it to a K-6 school. And so I wanted to just give a quick update on that. So uh, we have worked with Hanover Research, uh, obviously, as you all know, a research um, firm who to create a survey that will go out tomorrow to our community, to our uh, Del Sol parents. And uh, that will be open for two weeks. We'll also uh, provide a survey to our staff at the school as well of, as our students, uh, sixth through eighth grade, uh, again, to, to get feedback from those parties. 
Uh, the survey will go out to families and parents via Parent Square. And so we'll remind us through social media and email and, and Parent Square to those families. We'll also be scheduling a town hall, a community town hall in November, as well as a staff input session. Uh, we'll also do that in November. And then as we continue to collect uh, information data, uh, we'll be able to provide a comprehensive report to the board in December. Uh, the last kind of item that we'll be waiting on is our enrollment projections from the demographer. Uh, we, we expect that to come somewhere to uh, in mid to late November. And so we want to make sure that we have that information included in the comprehensive presentation uh, to the board in December. But I wanted to give you all an update and what we can expect in the near future, uh, basically starting tomorrow, is that survey to go out so that we can start to gather uh, perception data uh, from that school community. Thank you, Dr. Hansen. Adopt, approve routine action items by consent. That's number one through 22. Move to approve. First by Trustee Navarro, second by Trustee Jettweiler. Any questions or comments? Let's go ahead and call for the vote. Okay, four zero pass with one not present. Okay, we'll move on to the final voting item, an action item. Adapt 2022-2023 Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators. Mr. Brooks. Thank you, President Regal. Before the board is a recommendation to adopt a Declaration of Need for Fully Qualified Educators. Uh, this is a prerequisite to the issuance of our emergency teaching permits for the district. This item is brought before the board annually um, and is one of the state's requirements uh, for the Commission on Teacher Credentialing uh, that governs the issuance of emergency teaching permits and the orientation, guidance, and training of emergency permit holders. Um, the district has historically needed to hire very few, if any, teachers under this declaration. Um, what's listed there in the backup materials accounts for all anticipated potential needs uh, for this school year. Um, and, I, and I do feel uh, the duty to add, we are in a unique uh, time as far as a labor shortage and labor market. Um, and there are some, some uh, credential positions that are uniquely difficult to find also. And so at this time, uh, we're, we're bringing this uh, with, with kind of that in mind. There have been times in the past where we hired basically no one <laughs> under this, but um, we anticipate there being expanded need this year. So thank you, President Regal. I'll second. Okay, first by Trustee Jetweiler, second by Trustee Navarro. Any questions or comments? Uh, Trustee Navarro. Mr. Brooks, do you think this is something we'll be seeing in the foreseeable future that every year we're going to need to do something like this, or is it just hard to tell? We, we actually do bring it on an annual basis, um, just, just in preparation so that we're ready if we need to. Um, we're, we're pretty picky in terms of our hiring practices. At the same time, there are times where we find highly qualified candidates who uh, you know, say their circumstances they just haven't completed their credential or that maybe they have a single subject credential and they're, they're aspiring to be an elementary teacher, those kinds of things um, where, we, where we sign them up because they're the right person and we want to get them in the classroom. Um, I do anticipate likely more need for this in coming years. Okay, thank you. Okay, if there's no questions or comments, let's go ahead and call for the vote. Okay, 4 0 with one not present pass. Let's go ahead and go to board member committee reports. Trustee Navarro. I have no reports. Thank you. Trustee Bradford. 
I do. My educational partners equity committee met to continue its work. I'd like to thank Mr. Monty Owens for his leadership and guidance for our group. I think of it as providing the resources for the most beneficial environment possible to each student at this time in every young life that can never be duplicated to provide the groundwork for success in their future. To me, equity is the most important thing we can do. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Jitweiler. I also had the privilege of attending that and uh, after coming home from the county conference on equity to the district conference on equity. And we did this interesting brainstorming activity where we looked at, at disparities in test scores and then asked why and went back five levels on the why. Um, it didn't have a lot of convergence, so I hope they're doing something else to ask why, but it was cool. It was fun. I look forward to the next meeting. And, and as my uh, colleague to my left said, uh, thank you to, to Mr. Owens for uh, putting together a, a wonderful program. Thank you. Okay, I just, as I mentioned, I attended the District Advisory Council meeting. We have a lot of new parents um, involved. It's, been, it's primarily parents with staff, but heavily moms and dads are showing up and um, going over a new committee, a chair, uh, vice chair and things like that. That was um, covered on our first meeting of the school year, but ironically, uh, Norco College and RCC showed up to go over the CTE as well as the um, the dual enrollment programs to be able to inform the parents or the committee members to return back to school and kind of co go over those opportunities especially the middle schools and let them know like these steps that you can take. And then um, I know that R Roberta Pace was there and she kind of talked a little bit about the uh, college and career fair. And I, I've been asked about that lately. And so it looks like our student board members provided that information too. So it looks like we're going to see a lot more college fairs coming up in the coming weeks to talk about that. Um, that's all I have for today. Dr. Hansen, do you want to share anything? Yes, thank you. I just have a couple of comments. First of all, I want to thank uh, the students in Indian Hills who who wrote um, some very thoughtful and kind cards uh, to me. I'm assuming it's part of their culture of kindness, and that was very flattering and to be able to read those those letters and cards. Also, want to recognize our nutrition services staff. You may have saw. Um, Last week, I believe that we recognized uh, them for Nutrition Services Week and uh, certainly want to thank them for all their hard work and the efforts that they provide. It's been pretty difficult uh, coming out of the pandemic and um, serving, you know, having a universal meal program and trying to serve meals to all of our students. And they do such a wonderful job uh, keeping up with all of that. Again, just to remind everybody of the Harupa Unified School District Kindness Challenge and all the wonderful events that are taking place. I've really enjoyed going around to the various schools and participating in some of those uh, those events, and I feel fortunate that they've invited me to do so. Um, President Regal, you talked a little bit about fentanyl use, and, and that's something that's been on our radar. In fact, as you all recall, uh, we, we approved policy uh, a few board meetings ago to, to ensure that we have Narcan uh, on our campuses. Right now, that has been provided to our secondary campuses, both high school and middle school. And we're currently uh, working uh, with county health and, and the appropriate uh, avenues to, to get that at our elementary schools, as well as all of our SROs, uh, they carry that with them as well. And so we're proud that we are kind of on the cutting or leading edge of providing that in our schools so that we're prepared for, for that. I um, want to remind everybody that tomorrow is the great shakeout at 10, 18. So not, not, not 1017 or not 1019. It's at 1018 is the great shakeout tomorrow. And so we're, we're always excited to, um, to practice those exercises as well. I too would like to thank the Rotary Club as well as the Lions Club for their collaboration in the Food Fest. So it's two service organizations within our community that have come together uh, to provide that wonderful activity for our community and the proceeds will come back to the school district um, through scholarships for our students. So I certainly wanna thank them for their collaborative effort there in supporting our students. Um, also, I was able to um, meet with Congressman Takano 
at the potential or the future site of the Inland Empire Technical Trade Center. We were able to meet there with Mayor Barajas and as well as Chancellor um, Isaac from Riverside Community College District. And uh, that was a wonderful event. We were able to go back to Dr. Isak's office and strategize and talk a little bit about some of the challenges and, and next steps uh, with various staff that were there present. So again, just, just so grateful for all the wonderful things that are happening in our district and always so proud to, to serve alongside such wonderful, wonderful people who put uh, our students first. And that's very um, exciting to see. So that's it for tonight, President Regal. Thank you. Okay, thank you. So this meeting is adjourned at 6.56. Thank you for listening. Thank you for attending and have yourself a nice evening.